Welcome back. You're watching Traders Corner, and as always, we're joined by Garth McKenzie, who is the founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julieta. Garth, quite a uh, irritating week, I think, for the portfolio because um, Aspen, which is one of the first trades that you put on for the show, has you've now exited that trade, but I suppose not the way you would have wanted it. So maybe we should start there. Yeah, let's have a look at it. I mean, we, we've this was the first trade that we put on for the show for this year, and we put it on in the second week of January. Um, so we've held it for quite some time. And I know I've said in previous shows that I might look to execute a time stop loss on this thing because it's not really going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So let's qu quickly have a look and then I'll show you what's happened and, uh, and how I've exited it. Uh, w there's the chart of it up on the screen at the moment. And you can see that we've got this nice steady upward trend that goes back over the last, w in that case, more than a year. Um, and each time the stock has pulled back to that trend line, it's found support and it's bounced up off of that support line. Now, what I did uh, in, in, in January was I identified that it was on that support line again, and I figured it was time to buy it for a, for a bounce. Um, what I want to do, well, first of all, you can see I bought 625 CFDs there at, at 165 Rand, um, with a stop loss at 159 Rand. Now, where I've put that dotted box, um, I want to just zoom in on that area okay. and then have a quicker, <coughs> closer look. Um, so there you can see it's basically the last two and a half months worth of trading action. Um, that's where we bought uh, in the second week of January, we bought it at 165 Rand. And what I decided to do last week Thursday was to exit at 161 Rand 50. Um, unfortunately, that did result in us losing 2,938 Rand after costs. Um, but what, what happened here, as you can see, the stock's pretty much just gone sideways mm -hmm. for the last uh, month or so since we entered this. And I've threatened over the few weeks to maybe execute a time stop loss if it didn't work out. But what, what's also happened over the last couple of weeks is I've noticed many other broking houses putting out you know, short-term buy recommendations on Aspen. I did it, uh, then I've seen it out from Standard Bank, I've seen it out from um, Vunani last week, I've seen it from a number of other firms. And, uh, and, and notwithstanding all of those recommendations, the share hasn't been able to get up. And I thought to myself, you know, th there's a saying that if everyone's thinking the same way, then somebody's not thinking. <laughs> and I kind of got the feeling that if, if everybody's already long of this, we've, there's so many buy recommendations out there, short-term buy recommendations, um, there's a lot of potentially weak shareholders that could become frustrated with this thing and sell it if, if, if it doesn't start to do, to do something soon. Um, and I looked at that and I thought, you know what, let, let me rather execute my time stop loss here and, and get out. So I did, um, which on the day was the right thing to do. It did trade down to about 155 Rand mm. after that. So our original stop loss at 159 would, would have, have in been fact been yeah. triggered anyway. Um, so we got out at a slightly higher price. So we lost less than what, uh, what I initially said I was comfortable to lose on this trade. It has bounced back up since then. It's been trading at about 164 Rand today. But by and large, uh, you know, I, I think that this trade was given a fair amount of time. From a short-term perspective, I'm, I'm done with it now. But, but longer term, I still do like Aspen very much. I suppose you'd be really irritated if they came out with the superlative trading update and the shares had to rally, but yeah. that's uh, trading. Uh, well, that, that is trading, and it's a possibility. Because, you know, they, they will issue a trading statement most likely this week or next week. Um, yeah, and <laughs> Murphy's Law, maybe it will go higher after that. But, you know, as, as you say, that's trading. Um, if, if we had a crystal ball, it would be much easier. Yeah. So, okay, so Aspen uh, hasn't worked out. What about PPC? And that's also been, it seems rather sluggish. Yeah, it has been. You know, to be fair, the, the broad market has been sluggish. Um, there's obviously been pockets of, you know, certain stocks that have moved around a lot where you could have made good money. But, but for the most part, the market itself has actually been sluggish. I mean, I'll show in a chart of the top 40 just now that we've really tracked a 500-point range for the whole of February, mm. which is very tight. Anyway, I'm drifting off the topic. Let's talk about PPC here. Um, so the chart of it is up on the screen. This was the trade that we did last week for the portfolio. Um, as you can see, there's a nice steady uptrend there going back to July last year with a nice pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, what I'd identified was that there was this uh, falling wedge pattern and that we'd s seen a break out through the top of that falling wedge pattern. And that's typically a bullish mm. technical setup. So I bought for our portfolio, I bought 3,380 CFDs at, a hundred, at a 32 Rand 80 uh, with a stop loss of 31 Rand 70. And it has been working. Um, we, we're slightly on the right side of this trade. It's not running away from us, but um, it's not... Is, it's not triggering the stop loss either. So I'll give it some time and see. I mean, technically that setup is still quite good. Um, it still does project up to our target price of 36 Rand, which is, which is where I'll look to sell it. So I'm going stick, to stick with it for the moment. 
Um, it is a, a bit frustrating to see that it's lethargic in the same way that our Aspen trade was lethargic. But let's give it a bit of a chance. Okay, so still holding on to the PPC. Um, uh, you mentioned you wanted to bring up a chart of the top 40 to show what actually has been happening, and yeah. obviously not very much. Well, yeah, so this chart goes back also to July last year, where you can see we've got a nice steady upward trend, and the market remains in this uptrend. Um, but more recently, there's a, a slightly steeper upward trend indicated by that dotted line, which has been slightly broken to the downside. And really what I just want to point out here is that if you look at the trading action since the pro probably the fourth week of January till where we are now, the market's really gone sideways in a very tight range. Mm -hmm. And that, that range is about 500 points, um, which in percentage terms is about 1.4% on our market. Now, if you think about it, um, that... Your, your transaction costs on, on trading generally will be sort of 0.3 or 0.4% on that entry leg and then the same, the same on the way out. You, you, the, this market, broadly speaking, hasn't even given you enough of a range to really cover your transaction costs in the last th three or four weeks. So it has been a frustrating environment to trade. But as I said, you know, if you dig deeper, there obviously have been stocks that have made significant moves where you could have made some money. I think the guys that are doing well in this market at the moment are probably intraday traders who have very low transaction costs um, set up for themselves. For the type of trading that we're doing here where it's, you know, we buy a position or, or take a position with a view for a couple of days to a couple of weeks, um, there hasn't been a tremendous amount of volatility mm -hmm. for us there. So it's been a bit frustrating, but, you know, we, it's not going to stay this way forever, that's for sure. What about short sellers? Do you think they've been doing well, especially if they were short of some of the retailers? I think if you're in the right stocks, then yes. I mean, some of the retailers have been under pressure, correct. Um, some of the gold shares have been quite weak. Mm. Um, so there would have been a few areas of the market where you could have made some profits on the short side, absolutely. But by and large, my feeling is still that this is a bull market and you want to rather be looking for the strong stocks to be trying to buy. Mm. Um, and that's typically the philosophy that I follow. It's what we're going to be doing with our trade today. Yeah. Um, I just feel that your probability is, is stacked in your favor by following a, an approach like that. Mm. Well, uh, one of those shares is a share that you've highlighted fairly recently on the show, and that's African Rainbow Minerals. Yep. Um, so tell us about the setup. Yeah, so I've, I've spoken about this, I think, twice this year, and I've said I'm watching it. So, you know, <laughs> you can't sit and watch it forever. At some stage, you've got to do something. So I've, d I've done something this week. Um, if we look at this chart, what you can see is, and, and, and I've highlighted this previously, there was a big area of resistance at 198 Rand there, going all the way back to the middle of 2011. Um, so you can see it's quite a significant area of mm. resistance. We broke above that recently, and now the stock has been consolidating above the 198 Rand level, which should now act as support. Um, there's also a, a nice steady upward trend there that goes all the way back to the beginning of September. And you can see each time the stock has pulled back to that trend line, it's found support and it's bounced up off it. And you can see a nice steady pattern, of almost a step-like upward trend there where the stock's climbing. Um, what I want to do is just go and zoom in on that area, that uh, the, dotted, the dotted area. Um, there it is. And this basically shows us the last six months' worth of trading action. Uh, so there's the uptrend that I'd spoken about. And, uh, and there's the 198 Rand level, which was previously resistance and now acts as support. Mm. Um, what I also want to point out is take a look at the stochastic oscillator here. It's giving you what's called reverse, uh, bullish reverse divergence. So it's where your stochastic starts to become more oversold now, even though the share price is making a, a higher low. Um, and that's quite a bullish setup, particularly in an uptrend. It's a very bullish setup. Um, today, the stock, or last night, late last night after the market closed, the company put out a trading statement, which did indicate that earnings would be lower than the previous comparable period last year, but at the same time, the numbers were actually sort of in line to slightly better than what the market was looking for. And certainly um, better than the kind of numbers that have been posted by Anglo-American yep. or Rio Tinto yep. or uh, trying to think of a couple of other mining yeah, stocks, but correct, it's correct. at the top end of, of what the miners have been doing. It, it, it certainly is. Um, so based on all of this, based more, more on the technical picture that I see here, um, obviously thinking still a bit about the fundamentals though, um, I decided this morning to buy at 201 Rand. Basically what had happened was that the stock had pulled back to that rising uptrend. It went just under 200 Rand briefly. Mm -hmm. And I, I was trying to buy it, but you know, sometimes this share can be a bit illiquid, particularly early in the morning. Um, and, I, and I didn't get filled at 200, so eventually I thought, let me just pay up, pay, pay 201 Rand. So I've done that. I bought a 201 Rand, uh, stop loss is 194.50, and my target here is 220 Rand. Um, 
Okay, so, so you're looking for almost a 10% gain. Yeah, yeah, pretty much a 10% gain in the, in the underlying share price. Um, and that gives us a risk to reward ratio of nearly 3 to 1. Okay, so guys, can you take us through the mechanics of that? Sure. Interesting that it <laughs> has a slow start in the mornings like some people. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so it's buying, we're buying it at 201 Rand. Uh, the stop loss is 194.50. The risk, therefore, is 6 Rand 50 per share. Uh, I'm going to risk 1.5% of our trading capital on this trade. So we've got about 247,000 Rand at our disposal. So 1.5% of that is 3,705 Rand. Um, so if I take it th the, through the calculation that we always do, we take the portfolio risk and we divide it by the risk per share. It gives us 570 shares, which are then it, each share equates to mm -hmm. one CFD. So I've bought 570 CFDs. Um, and then the target is 220, as I mentioned, and the risk to reward ratio there is 1 to 2,92. So almost a 3 to 1 mm. risk reward ratio. Garth, I know you said that the technical setup is more alluring to you than the fundamentals, but is it quite a, a good case for a share when they come out with a trading update that does warn of a drop in headline earnings as African Rainbow Minerals did last night and the share actually rallies on the news because it has rallied today? Yeah, it has rallied since I bought it. Yeah, it is good. It's a very good sign. Uh, it obviously tells you that the market's discounted what you could perceive to be negative news um, and it's looking forward. Uh, so it is, it is a good sign, absolutely. It well, also it, it removes the uncertainty because you know, a lot of us have been waiting for a trading update mm. to, de to decide whether we should be buying this. I mean, technically it's been looking good for a while and I've, I've pointed it out here a couple of times. But this just gives me that added little bit of comfort now. And what is your assessment generally on the resources sector? Um, or do you think it's also a stock picker's market because one was looking at the resources sector as the recovery sector for 2013, but if you look at the gold shares, Anglo Platinum, obviously, yeah. uh, and Anglo American, they've all been hammered and yeah. with some fairly specific issues there. Yeah, I think it is a stock picker's area of the market. Um, broadly speaking, the resources sector certainly does seem to have come back into vogue this year. Last year, we largely ignored it because it was underperforming so badly. This year, it's actually doing a lot better. But having said that, you do need to drill down into the stocks. Um, and regular viewers will remember, I think it was two weeks ago, we put up a, a table showing what are the strongest resources mm. stocks and what are the weakest ones. Um, and the stronger ones are the likes of African Rainbow Minerals, um, BHP Bulletin, Kumba, um, Xaro is starting to look a, a very exciting if it can stay above 180. So, the, so yes, th there are pockets of, of weakness where you talk about the, the gold shares and Anglo Platinum and what have you. And, uh, but then there are also stronger shares as well. So I think you want to just focus your resources buying on those stronger shares. Okay. So what does the portfolio look like, um, given maybe the wobble with Aspen and the fact that PPC has been rather sluggish? Yeah. Okay, we're down slightly. Um, we're down 1.36% for the year to date. It's not serious. It's still early in the year. Um, so you know, I'm confident that we'll recover. Um, th there are all our trades to date. So the Aspen showing a loss there. Um, then uh, we've got our put spread option structure still working for us in the background. PPC we still long of and African Rainbow Minerals we are long of and there's actually a mark to market profit there as well now which I haven't put in the, mm. in, I haven't chalked it up as yet. Garth, and just uh, very quickly on that put spread um, option uh, that you entered into a couple of weeks ago, do you think that's going to work out uh, or is your um, feeling that uh, uh, given that we're in a bull market yeah. um, it's, it's unlikely to? You know, this, this structure only starts to work below 34,000 on the top 40. We're currently trading at about 36,300 or thereabouts. Um, so the market would need to fall approximately 6% before this, this structure even gets a look in. Um, so, so do I feel that it's going to fall into our sweet spot where we can make the maximum profit? I think that's probably unlikely. But remember, this, this structure actually gives me a lot of flexibility. I can either leave it as is if I become bearish and I think that the market's going to fall uh, you know, 10, 15%, then this, this structure will work very well for us. Alternatively, if we get that 6 or 7% pullback in the market, go and find some support around about that 34,000 area, I can buy against this structure and use that as a hedge, which then also gives me a lot of, uh, a lot of protection on the downside. So there's a couple of different ways to use this thing, to, mm -hmm. to play it. Um, my feeling is that we probably will get a correction at some point. I mean, th the market seasonally is weak during the April-May period. Mm -hmm. So let's see, though. I mean, my opinion doesn't count for much. I'll trade what I see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then on that note, to end off with very quickly, your upcoming courses? 
All right, I've got one coming up on the 2nd of March in Johannesburg and uh, on the 9th of March in Cape Town. There's still space available on both of those courses, so anybody that's interested and wants to come and learn to trade, email me, garth at traderscorner.co.za, and I'll send you the details. Okay, great, Garth, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much, as always. Uh, that's Garth McKenzie, uh, the founder and editor of Traders Corner.